focusing on wordplay in different uh, materials, but the materials that have definitely uh, been been blown up, no, no balloon pun intended. Please enjoy this quick tip video brought to you by Tuftex Balloons. Hello everyone. Okay, so here's a super cool trick. When the balloon garland is moving too much at the bottom, then we're gonna do an H method, of like an attachment point at the bottom. All you need is duct tape on carpet. You may not wanna do this duct tape because it might leave some residue. So just go with a clear tape and you can do this for outdoor installations as well. When you tape your tape to the floor, just fold the little corner so it will be easier for the client just to take it off. And with the 260, you're going to then you're going to attach it to the balloons. Tuftex, thank you so much. This is what we created with your beautiful balloons. And we're back on air with LA Balloons. I'm Andrew, and I'm here with Karen. And today we are here with at Blacksmith from Instagram, Michael James Schneider, artist, author, entrepreneur. He's got over 1.2 million followers throughout all of his social media platforms. Welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. I Thank you so much for having me. It's really, really great to be here. I we are very, very excited to have you. The second time. The second time. <laughs> <laughs> so once this airs, um, just FYI for everyone who's listening, this is the second time we're meeting Michael. Um, but whether those podcasts are like us, I mean, this is the first time that we're having guests on this season. So we had a little bit of technical difficulties in the first time we tried to do this shoot. So this is why we're saying that it's the second time doing the shoot with Michael. So, But we're going to get through this one and it's going to go smooth, I know it for sure. Um, really quick, shout out to Contest Balloons for uh, sponsoring our show. Um, this is uh, LA Balloons on our LA Balloons. If you don't know who we are, we are an online wholesale distributor. If you want professional service, better products, fast shipping, LABalloons.com. That's where you go. Balloons, silk flowers, party supplies, event supplies, anything you need like that. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Covered it all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think I've got that down. It only took five episodes. <laughs> you know, we're going to get right back into it. Um, actually, I want to circle back to, because what you're really mostly known for at this point right now, I think, is your Instagram. That's your biggest following, right? With uh, Yeah. Yeah. Instagram. Um, Facebook is is behind that a little bit. It's mostly like meta platforms. Um, it's a big deal. Uh, you're hearing it here first that I've finally been harassed into getting onto TikTok. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do that a little more. And uh, you know, the challenge for any creator, or any artist in this world is to diversify. It's also like, you know, that weird balance between art and content. And you want your art to be taken seriously. You want your art to be, um, you know, to, to have integrity to it. But you also still have to distill it through a social media platform because that's how so many people get known and get discovered and, and just get eyes on their work. Especially since my medium is very internet based, you know, it's, it's, um, it, it exists in reality for only two hours, only the two hours that we're doing in the installation, then it disappears. And I love that aspect of it. Uh, I, I cherish that the people get excited because they only intersect with the art for a very, very brief time. There's only a very narrow window of time where they exist at the same time as, as the artwork exists, uh, unless it's online. So that's also been a challenge to sort of uh, you know, manage that and navigate that, that sort of awkward relationship between online culture and, you know, having the integrity of your art intact. What is the, the, the main goal or purpose for the art that you create? What are you, what is, I guess, before you start that process of trying to think of what your next project is going to be, 
I guess, what are you trying to get across uh, to people through your art? That's, that's a really, that's a really good uh, question. And I'm hoping that the overarching message from just my very existence and the fact that I am, you know, I'm a 50 year old creator making viral art and that's unusual in itself too. Uh, so that's, that, yes, oh, thank you. <laughs> I got those good things from, uh, from, from my mom and my dad. Say mid-30s. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that. But, but there is that lesson too, where I do have a, that, uh, quote that, uh, it, we've been trying to find the attribution for it. it. It's kind of fuzzy where it came from originally. Uh, but somebody said, you are not too old and it is not too late. And that's so exciting and, and inspirational for me from someone who did just start ramping up or, or started my art career when I was 40, when it was, when I was like 11 years ago. And so, so that is one what perspective that, that I, that I hope people take from, from my art. Um, I hope another perspective that they take is just that mental health and wellness and even trauma can be something that, that we ourselves choose to find, find, um, a secret springboard for joy, not to say that, that, that things that are traumatic or, uh, horrible should be celebrated or laughed at. But I personally am very much someone who deals with, you know, uncomfortable things or uncomfortable emotions or sad emotions with humor. And I'm sure there's a lot to unpack from that in general anyway, but it's been really nice to just create community and, and see people interacting with my art in a way that's helpful to them. Uh, you know, I don't always, get it right. I don't, I don't, every message isn't going to be for everyone. A lot of them for, or for very specific lived experiences. Uh, but I get really, really excited. And that's when it seems like I get that light bulb moment of this is why you're doing it. This is why you're doing it to help people or to help people find other people who laugh at the same things that they do or, or process big emotions and, and, and big life events in the same way that I do. Uh, that's really exciting, creating community. And I also feel like the typographic art is something that's very, very easy for me as an artist to, uh, you know, interpret, uh, it's not even his bed. It's not even his dinner time. Uh, he's just meeting uncontrollably, uh, just because he wants to a cat. Yeah, he, he just wants to be part of the con conversation. Maybe, maybe he needs his own podcast uh, because he's, he he's definitely definitely wanting to be the center of attention right now. Um, but I, I just, I love the idea of, again, people finding community and of when I, um, you know, when I've made the typographic art, it's given more visibility to my other art that's weirder. My other art where I do, you know, cover my entire head in peanut butter uh, in a time lapse. Or my other art where I have, you know, this web series that is these 12 inch puppets that started, you know, during the pandemic and I'm making season two right now. And those won't get nearly as many eyeballs on them as, you know, the typographic and the balloon art does. But there's something so satisfying about having uh, a lot more eyes and a lot more audience for my other really, really weird art um, than I would have otherwise. And so that's exciting, too, where, where the typographic art, you know, it speaks to me and I love it. And it's colorful and it's wonderful. And it, and it is very, very me. But it does... It, it gives a bigger audience to my other art. So I, I love that, that part too. Do people ever recognize you like out, like when you're just out and about, like, every day. no, every day, every day. I, I cannot leave my house without getting recognized, which is also strange. And I asked for that. Like, like I, I have to remember that, uh, during, 
um, probably like 2020, May of 2020, uh, that's when my typographic art really blew up. I, I was doing it before that. I was doing the balloons. I was doing flower, uh, the fake flower petal installations before that. And then shortly after that, I, um, I found those LED letters that I put in nature and those have taken off too. But ever since then, I get recognized daily, daily. And there's something really great about that. And there's something also like really, you know, interesting and unusual about it too. Uh, the good thing about it is that, you know, I never wanted to watermark my art. I just didn't like how that looked. I know a lot of photographers like watermark their, their photography. Um, I don't. And so my face in a lot of these photos, unless I have guest models in them, which I love having, uh, but my face is kind of my watermark. Like, like I, I chose to put my face in all of these. And so that has made me uh, really recognizable, I guess. And, and it's great. It's validating even more so than, you know, putting something online that you really put a lot of work into and having it go viral. That's wonderful. But like, you know, someone stopping you on the street and saying that they love your art, that's a whole other wonderful gift that you're given like every day. And so I just wake up with so much gratitude. I, I quit my job, you know, last October, my, my full-time day job, my, my retail career, 30 years now. And, um, that was the best decision. It feels like I'm retired. It feels like I'm, I'm, you know, meant to do this. Uh, you do get the other side of that where you do realize that you do broadcast or I do broadcast a lot of my personal life, uh, online. And, and it does come up from a place of vulnerability. It comes from a place of community building. Um, I, I hope it doesn't come off as like performative or like oversharing or anything like that. Uh, you know, last year I very, I was very public about a couple of really huge losses, which was, was my dad and my beloved cat passing within a month of each other. And that was just this huge, like, uh, heartquake for, for lack of a, a better, a better term. I mean, I was just, you know, rocked and, and, and my world was, was gone. It was these two, uh, beings that I, that I loved, uh, so much. And that was also interesting to choosing to make that public because that's bizarre when you're walking through a grocery store and you have a stranger express condolences to you. That, that's a whole other weird thing. And, and, you know, I have to internalize that and be like, I chose this. This was, this was what I wanted. Remember that. Remember, this is what you wanted, Mike. Um, and so that's, you just have to sort of like save a little bit in your heart. You have to just sort of like pre be prepared for that. So like every time I leave, leave my house, I do have to be prepared to, to meet people as somebody who's like a natural introvert that doesn't come naturally to me. Uh, I really do recharge. I'm you sorry. Your, you would consider yourself an introvert. Totally. The guy, the guy who puts himself in every single one of his photos uh, that go viral is actually an introvert, believe it or not. And, That's and funny. I think it, I, I think I got over that. I'm not got over it. I don't think it's something to get over. I still very much recharge from time alone, not necessarily, you know, time with other people, but there was something about it that I really, uh, I really enjoyed sort of getting pushed outside of that comfort, that comfort level, that comfort zone. There was something really satisfying, uh, even, you know, being in retail for 30 years, even if not all of those 30 years were like client facing, that also teaches you to like just interact with strangers a lot more comfortably than you would naturally. And I also think just the online success of my art has also really, really contributed to like getting me out of those like really, uh, inside insecure, uh, introverted, you know, inward looking spaces. Uh, and I, I love that. I, I love that it kind of pushed me out of my, my comfort zones. I, I love meeting new people. So now that you've transitioned successfully, congratulations from your retail career into a full-time artist. Is Thank there you. anything in hindsight 
that you would have done differently? You've done it sooner, uh, knowing that you could do this. Would you have stayed in retail as long as you did? Um, that is a great question. I think so. Um, I wish I had discovered the. I, I wish I leaned leaned a little harder into the typographic art sooner than I had. But I'm glad that the the journey happened the way it did. Um, you know, leaving my full time job, I definitely counted on. Uh, it, I, I sort of rewind to my time in Los Angeles uh, when I lived there for 12 years and I would see my actor friends booking a commercial in February and then they wouldn't work the rest of the year. And it's like, how do you do that? How do you budget that? And now I, as a full-time artist, am, am discovering how to do that and discovering how to budget. And, you know, I had to take care of my, my healthcare right away too and get that, get that figured out and straightened out. Um, so I'm living that freelance life now, which can be a lot, uh, can be very nerve wracking. Um, so I think I would have like, uh, had a bigger cushion when, when I left as well, uh, because the jobs were really inconsistent. The, the, uh, the economy right now is a little, a little shaky. Uh, so that, that influencer economy is, is suffering or very, very kind of like, like, uh, not, not thriving as much as it has in the past, but honestly, I'm, I'm living my best life right now. Uh, I, I, it's hard to, to come up with something that I would regret or do differently because now it feels like I'm retired. I still, I, I'm enjoying my life. This past summer was one of the best summers I've ever had. I think every summer in Portland, the summer lasts like two weeks here. Uh, it, it does rain as much as they say it does. It is as cloudy as, as much as uh, people say it is. Um, the winter lasts like 18 months long, but there was always so much FOMO, especially working a retail job when you're working so many weekends and you're getting so many invitations from friends and you're getting, uh, you know, all of these events all happen on the weekend and you're just always at work and you always hear about it too late and you never RSVP in time or you never hear about the events in time. And I think that was very much my entire life was just like not being able to enjoy the city as much as I, as I could. And now that I'm freelance, I can determine my own schedule. And I did so much this summer that I've never done before and enjoyed the heck out of my city. Uh, I, I, I love this city. And, and I think maybe, you know, maybe, maybe the, the summers are going to be where I stay put in, in Portland going forward. And then the winters is when I'm going to get the heck out of here and go somewhere sunny. <laughs> So you do have a lot going on. You've made that transition. And now as an artist, as an author, as an entrepreneur, you have the time that you want to spend in each of the different avenues. Uh, and then whether it's leisure time, like you were mentioning, you know, if you want to take someone up on that invitation, go to that wedding, whatever that I'm very familiar with missing out on those weekend activities. Um, <clears throat> I had spent 15 years in uh, retail myself. So, um, very understandable. And like, it is freeing to get that Saturday, Sunday off or the night off or just being able to choose. Actually, there were six months in my career where I didn't actually need to work. Um, and I was able to choose, oh, I can go to the gym at two o'clock in the afternoon and it's going to be dead. And I slept in and I can spend my time how I want. But, um, you know, you having so many different things that you're kind of balancing, what is, you know, a typical day for you look like outside of jumping on a podcast with LA balloons and having technical difficulties? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a good question. There is, there's really no set typical day. Uh, I definitely, I, I, I made this, uh, this, this comparison before where I compared, you know, leaving my full-time day job to uh, seasonal depression where I, I loved my job and I still love the brand and I love my coworkers and still spend time with some of them. But it wasn't until I left 
where I felt like, oh, this is this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what I'm meant to do. Uh, again, just like seasonal depression, where I don't think I have it. We get that gorgeous day in like February or March, and then all of a sudden everybody's like, you know, in shorts and smiling and happy. And it's like, oh, maybe this is how I should feel all the time. And so that's how I felt instantly. Is like, this is how I should feel all the time. I assumed a lot of structure was going to go away to my day to day because my day job was very ones and zeros. I was an operations manager and then a leader at my, uh, my retail store taking inventories, very black and white, very, very, you know, binary, right or wrong. And I kind of assumed that that was the thing that was keeping me disciplined in my personal life and artistic life. And it was keeping me scheduled. And I thought, I made assumptions about myself where I was like, I'm going to sleep in every day till like two. I'm going to like, you know, not, not, you know, be as motivated to do art. And that, that couldn't have been less true. Uh, I was, again, this one needs a little attention. Um, I could have been, I couldn't have been more wrong. I, you know, get up every day at seven, eight. I take care of emails. Uh, after that, I sort of do all the like paperwork stuff, whether it's paying bills or, you know, uh, paying my studio, my art studio rent, uh, doing things like that where it is the more like logical, structured things uh, in, in my day to day. Um, usually a few days beforehand, I'll decide whether I'm doing a, uh, a shoot that day or not. I used to, when I had two days off a week, I used to stack those shoots. I used to just pile them on. I would have two or three shoots a day. Each shoot takes two hours. And so that was also really, really just so hard to keep up that schedule. And I would just like, you know, come back to work for my two days off. So burned out because I had just done work with my art and it, and it felt like work too. And now it really feels like play. I do one shoot, maybe two maximum if I'm, you know, if I've got a, a set schedule or something, but I'll do one shoot a day. That's incredibly fulfilling. Uh, I bike 18 miles a day. That usually takes two hours to do. And that's a new thing for me. That's a new thing this year is biking so much because I love being on my bike. I got rid of my car years ago, uh, which was not something I could necessarily do easily in LA. Um, so you don't have a car, but I, but you I bike everywhere? I'm you sorry. Bike everywhere. You don't have a car. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. I bike everywhere. It's usually pretty easy, even in the rainy season, even uh, when it's, you know, light snow out, but maybe I'll just take public transportation if it's looking icy out. Um, but yeah, I got rid of my car in 2015 and I don't miss it. I had a, a, a whatchamacallit, I had a, a commute to work that was like 20, 25 minutes on bike. So that was really easy. My commute to my studio is seven minutes by bike. So easy. Uh, so I, I love it. And Portland is such a bikeable city. This is, this is absolutely going to sound like a commercial for Portland. I swear it's not. Uh, but it was something funny when, when I, I, you know, gave notice at my job or I quit my job. So many people were asking, where are you going to go now? Where are you going to live? What are you going to do? And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm staying in Portland. I, I love this city. I'm never going to hate on big cities. I loved LA. I still love LA. Visiting LA is so much fun as a tourist. <laughs> it's so much more fun than it was, at least for me, uh, when, when I lived there. But I do think if you do anything online, if you are a creator, if you are a creator who relies on on the internet to to spread your work around, I don't know. I think you can be anywhere, and and I feel like large cities or you know cities that have a, a, a lot of creatives in them do a really good job at gaslighting people into thinking that that's the only place that you can be successful. And I feel if your medium is a digital medium, then you can really, really be successful and happy anywhere. anywhere. I, I, I don't, I, I love visiting the big cities and maybe this is just perspective of me needing a, a city with a slower pace uh, than LA too. But I don't know. I love visiting LA. I love visiting New York. I love visiting Mexico city. I just, I love these big creative meccas. 
But I just don't necessarily feel the urge to uh, to live there because I, I think Portland's paradise. I feel like you having the opportunity to like travel and like go pretty much anywhere, I think also kind of helps like the creative, like your creative juices kind of flow. Um, so, you know, so I feel like you go to different places, like you said, maybe it's not like you wouldn't want to live there. But I think it like, would you say that it like helps you kind of expand to like this is my next idea and inspire inspire you pretty much yeah and and it also really helps me uh uh collaborate with other people i love including guest models in my shoots uh other people who are in sort of like the same realm um it's it's wonderful to uh to include them. Uh, James McRae is a wonderful creator and I was able to do a shoot with him in Austin when I was there for South by Southwest. Uh, Najwa Zebian, uh, I think she's in Toronto, but she flew down to, to New York the last time I was in New York to do a, a guest model collaboration with me. And these are people who, uh, you know, they have, they have books, uh, they have very, very large accounts. They're, they're mental health accounts and it's wonderful to include them. And, and to, for me to feel included in their ranks as well, because I do very much consider myself a curator. And so it's, it's wonderful when I, when I get to spend time with these thought leaders, uh, in the mental health field, um, you know, including guest celebrities, the, the, you know, I, I have, uh, uh, well-known people and, 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 you know, famous actors and celebrities who, who follow me. And I'm, I'm so honored and flattered. And I also love to include them in the photos too, uh, when I can, uh, right now, Natasha Rothwell, one of my favorite shoots, and she's having a moment right now where she's just having so much success. She was one of the, uh, uh, the, the cast on insecure, a show that I absolutely loved and it made me miss LA so much. Um, and, and she's got a, a, a couple of shows that are, that are emerging right now, which is really exciting. It's, it, it's fun to, to have that sort of like back and forth, uh, collaboration. And so, yeah, I just, I consider myself, uh, very, very lucky. And, you know, I think, I think one question I get as an artist a lot is like, what's next? And I don't even know what's next. Like, I'll be just as surprised as you. I'll be just as surprised as everybody to learn, like, what is, what is the next thing that I create? I, I got that question a lot when I made my box wine boyfriend project. I think that was early 2018 where I had had a bad breakup and I made a sort of like fake human sized boyfriend out of empty boxes of wine that I like self medicated with after the breakup. And so we just took, you know, posed pictures in like the grocery store and in my neighborhood and things like that. And that was just this huge viral hit. And people were always like, what's next? What's next? And the balloons weren't even a glimmer in my eye at that point, but it was just, it was, it was, uh, it was fun to like, not feel pressure too. like, I don't know what's going to happen after the balloons. Maybe I'll get tired of them. Maybe I won't, but, uh, I'll be really, really excited when, when I see what's next too. Doing like working with balloons. Like I know you do just like the quotes have, I'm sure you've seen like all the other decor that's in like the balloon industry. Has that ever like, made you want to say like, that's what I want to do next. Or has it not like, you're like, I'm sticking to the letters. I'm sticking to the quotes. And like, that's it. Like, can people, can someone hire you to decorate or do some sort of personal installation for an event for themselves? Totally. Yeah. No, those are really good questions. Um, I, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tangential relationship with the balloon industry, which is why I was really, really excited when, when we were, when we started talking together um, and, and, uh, LA balloons specifically, I use them a lot when I like do remote installations. I think I first connected with them a couple years ago when I was doing installations in LA and then also was hired out in Palm Springs. So that's, there's like a, a few different, uh, layers and levels of just like how I do my art. Um, I am doing an installation, uh, sort of like a, a, a charity installation for the AIDS walk soon here in Portland. Um, and I'll, I'll donate installations to charitable organizations. I have a couple other organizations, Portland street medicine and the street roots magazine, uh, you know, homelessness and houselessness are very, very, uh, uh, issues that are, that are close to my heart. 
And so I'm connecting with them as well. But also, yeah, people can hire me. Uh, somebody almost hired me for a, uh, a proposal uh, this past summer. In fact, when I'm doing my installations, especially the flower installations in, in grassy parks and things, people always inevitably somebody asks if it's for a proposal. And sadly, no, it's not. Usually, unless it's a proposal to a narcissist. <laughs> I think that's that's uh, the direction that a lot of my quotes go in. Um but but yeah, we're we're exploring a few different things. I've got the, that that um, uh, two book deal with Penguin, and the second book comes out August of 2025. So I'm really excited about that. The first book is doing really really good. It's a very like giftable book. Are you someone um, who writes and, every day? So is that when you're making your book, are you doing a little bit every day? Or are you? It's already written most of it, and like you're going back and revising it all the time. Like, what's that like? Yeah. For you? That's a good question. So that the the books that Penguin is having me do is very much a sort of like retrospective of my art. So most of it was already done. I did a few original installations for it, and those those were really exciting. I, I love those installations. So that part is very much a like. Uh, sort of filling in the blanks whenever the editors reach out to me and they're like, okay, we need an introduction to this section. Uh, we want you to write like a, a little bit of, of, of something for for this section. And so I'll, I'll always sort of like be malleable and available for them and adapt to that. Um, from the writing point of view, you know, I really did start as a writer. So it's no... It's no surprise that that I got into like wordsmithing and and quote art and things like that. And so the writing, I do a little bit of writing, but you know my my blog posts I, I release few and far between. Uh, but I am working on a revision of a self published novel from like ten years ago. Uh, it's a fiction book, and so I want to pitch that now that I have a foot in the door at Penguin. I want to pitch that to them and, and see how that goes. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's very much like a, 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 a sort of amorphous, malleable uh, uh, life that I live, where I just you know feel fill these blank spaces with uh, with creative projects. When you left your like retail job, did you ever think that balloons would get you this far? Like, did you ever think that you would have all these opportunities with all these different people, have the followers that you have? I, so I first left my retail job in 2012 and that prompted me to move away from LA and move to Portland. And I really, I realized very quickly after that, I, I definitely need like a, a day job and an income. And so the balloons hit a couple years before I left more recently. I left last October and then the balloons hit probably like May of 2020. Um, and so I, I, I felt a little bit when they first hit in, in, in 2020, I was like, okay, this is going to slow down. This is just a trend. This is just, this is just going to be a, a, a sort of like trendy and then it's going to go away. And then they just started hitting post after post started going viral and, and installation after installation, they were really, really speaking to, to people. And so there was a little bit of like safety cushion when I did leave my job where I was like, okay, I know people are enjoying these. I know they're, they're popular, but I really couldn't rely on just like one thing. I couldn't rely on getting, you know, collaboration deals with Instagram, uh, because some of my, my posts do lean political and I'm very outspoken about, about who I like and who I don't like, uh, uh politically. Um, I, I, wasn't sure and, and still I'm not sure if there is like a lifeline or a, a timeline to these, but there doesn't seem to be a, uh, a slowing down point. Uh, you know, I'm the worst person to, to predict whether something's going to go viral or whether it's going to be a flop. And while that's not the, the biggest criteria for me, it is important to me for these messages to get out there. And so I will, you know, hit on all cylinders with a post. I will, uh, uh, really love this installation of the quote. It speaks really profoundly to me and I'll put it out to the world and to the public and it just falls flat. Or I'll do one where I'm just like, this is silly. This feels so silly. 
you know, very recent example two weeks ago, and I'm dragging my friend Eric out, and I'm like, I've been trying to do this post forever, and it's a post about like, you know, if if uh, if we start texting now, we'll be in matching PJs by Christmas, and I was just absolutely convinced that this was going to be a flop, and nobody was going to like it, and it doesn't necessarily have to do with mental health, so like, why am I doing this? And I dressed in this Christmas outfit, and it was like green balloons on a red background, and I was like, why why are we doing this this is so this is it just doesn't feel on brand and it and it felt uh i don't know it just felt silly and of course it's just gone mega viral and it has over 300,000 likes on it and i think 8 million views and i just i you i'm sorry know. You just got, that's why you just got Yeah, it. no, you never know what's, what's going to hit big. You never know what, what people are going to need to hear at that specific time. And so that also feels really good from a point of view of like, uh, feeling less pressure. Not every installation I make needs to be a huge hit, but me doing these installations, it's just so good for my mental health. It's my happy place to be out in public and doing these installations and having people like honk hello or honk their approval or give me a thumbs up or come up and start talking to us. Like I'm having the time of my life. Like there's something so validating and wonderful and great about the process. And when people talk about process, that's my process. And I love the process. Something can go viral and that's validating. I mean, imagine, you know, 300,000 strangers giving you a compliment. That's incredibly validating. I mean, imagine two giving you a compliment. That's, that's just as validating and, and wonderful. Do you, um, do you have, but it's really the process and just connecting with humans. Like that's, that's the part that's satisfying. Do you have a favorite quote to date? at this point or one that um, you kind of, let's just say, live by or one that's like um, near and dear to you, like a favorite motivational quote or a favorite quote you've, you've put out? Either or. That's a really, really great question. Um, I love Stop Romanticizing the People Who Hurt You. Uh, I love it as a message. Typographically, it's very hard to fit because that word romanticizing has like 80,000 letters in it. And so it's very hard to like balance out in my visual brain where, where it looks good to me. Uh, so I do, I do love that quote and it's sort of like a touchstone of mine. Um, Lauren Morrill had a wonderful quote. Um, I don't know how to explain to you that you should care about other people. And I think especially in the past eight years, say that quote is something that I keep coming back to and keep coming back to, uh, since we, we appear as sort of like a country, as a world, as a culture to be sort of, uh, having an empathy crisis. And, and I feel like people, uh, don't find enough to find in common with each other. Mm. So I love how that quote addresses that. Um, and the mural that I did that original installation on uh, is, is actually wonderful. It's, it's a really funny story about that, too, if, if I have time for a, a quick story. Um, I did that installation thinking that the author was somebody else. I thought it was Kayla Chadwick, somebody who wrote an article uh that had that as the title very shortly after I posted it. Um, the, the actual author, uh, reached out to me uh, very shortly within hours of me posting it. And was like, I, I actually like wrote a tweet about it. And then that other person who wrote the article kind of like took my tweet and made it her, her, the headline of her article and that other person who wrote the article doesn't have any online presence. So it's unclear whether she even knows that, that she, she stole the quote. Um, so I credited the, the right author. Um, but it really just went bonkers. It went viral. It really spoke to a lot of people about, you know, ostensibly I meant it to represent, you know, how people felt about like masking during the pandemic and things like that. And I was wearing a mask in it. But because of when I posted it, which was at the end of May, um, a lot of people sort of uh, co-opted it and used it 
uh, you know, for the movement uh, that was happening in in uh, in spring and summer of 2020, uh, that everybody felt uh, you know really really energized by. And so I was really flattered that it was used for that. And I, uh, it, it just spoke to so many people and I, it spoke to so many people's experiences. I also did it on this mural that was just absolutely beautiful. And at the time, the guy didn't have an Instagram account. He just had a hashtag, uh, uh, Abner. And just recently, this year, early this year, I was doing a, uh, a shoot and this guy walked by and he's like, oh, like big fan of yours. These are, these are, you know, great. I love these messages and, and uh, it's great to meet you. And we were chatting and stuff and his name is Ron. And it became apparent pretty quickly that he was actually the muralist of that mural. Oh. Uh, he did have an Instagram account now. And it was so exciting to like, show him he i think a lot of that was off his radar he didn't really realize that the post had gone viral um and and i let him know yeah like i think uh marie claire or or l or one of one of uh lifestyle magazine uh wrote an article about that post and about you know attribution and that quote was attributed incorrectly to dr fauci for a while too and he's like i never said that um and so uh so it was just really fascinating fascinating to sort of fill him in on that. And also we were just kind of like fanboying over each other too, because I was such a fan of his artwork and his murals that I saw all around Portland. And I didn't realize the entire time that, that I was even on his radar. Uh, so that was just incredibly like validating and exciting. And so when you ask what my favorite one is, I, I think I have, I, I, I ne don't necessarily have a favorite, but that is the quote that I have like the best stories and the best feelings about. So. Very cool. So we are running out of time and I want to make sure because we've already taken up two of your Thanks. time slots. <laughs> no, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for having Really me. quick. Do you have any questions for us? We do have a giveaway that we're going to announce in a second here. Um, but do you have any questions for us really quick that we can cover? We are no, no, not at all. This was so exciting. I was like so happy to, to be And on. we got so through thank you for having the technical me. humps. So <laughs> I'm happy we got through this. Um, we really do appreciate your time. It was really great getting to know you. I hope you do stop by LA the next time you're here. We definitely want to show you around I and will. meet in person. Um, yeah, I'll keep you posted. But really quick, Karen is going to go through for our viewers um, what to do to win the prize for this week. This week's prize Perfect. is another Tough Tech's uh, fun goodie bag. And to like to win the bag, you can like the post, comment on YouTube, and then we'll go ahead and just pick a random winner on there. So good luck to everybody who's entering the giveaway. Every week, someone's going to win something new. Um, we will reach out to you separately. Uh, so make sure you leave your information. Um, please make sure to follow at Blacksmith on Instagram and all of his social medias um, at LA Balloons on air with LA Balloons. Like, subscribe, share. If you like this podcast, if you like the show, if you got any value out of this content, uh, we do appreciate you sharing that. And don't forget LABloons.com. If you want to get the right product on time, you know where to go. And that's everything for me. Karen? I was just going to say really quickly for anybody who's wondering, um, I know we talked about it the first time we tried to shoot this, but. Um, if you're wondering what Michael does with all of his letters, he's actually reuses them. So he is very resourceful, um, environmental friendly. So he makes sure he reuses them in a lot of his um, installations. installations. So if anybody was curious, that's what's going on with his I, letters. <laughs> I did think about that in the middle of the podcast and kudos for doing that. We do appreciate that. Latex balloons are biodegradable and the Mylars can be reused. So they're great for the environment if you use them appropriately. And the art that people create, exactly. like what Michael right. does and all the balloon decorators is, it's amazing. It, it really, really, really is. It's very impactful and I'm happy it's reached so many people. Yeah. I feel like you've been able Thank to so do so much with your work. Um, and I do see that like you do have a lot of followers. A lot of the followers that we have and you have are mutual. Um, so I think it's great. I think people are, are going to get to know a little bit more about you and all the opportunities that you've had in the balloon industry and just overall and how much you've done. Um, I think you're a great example of kind of leaving that like 
regular like just retail life and then taking that like leap and just doing what really makes you happy so you're a great example of that it's been great to get to know you a little bit more so uh congrats on all of your success and i think that's it for me so thank you so much thank you so much for having me you're so kind and thank you for the really kind words you you made my day made my week we will see you guys next week and michael we look forward to meeting you in person um Bye, guys. Be sure to follow us on all our socials. We are on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and Pinterest. Thank you to our sponsor, Tough Text, for supporting the podcast on air with LA Balloons. Tough Text is known for their high quality balloons, unique colors, and for being trendsetters in the industry. Are you a balloon artist, own a party shop, or planning an event? If you're looking for professional products, better service, and faster shipping, then check us out at LABalloons.com. We carry all of your favorite balloon brands, silk flowers, party supplies, equipment, and more.